Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 2.5, which is graphing linear inequalities. Hopefully, we recall how to graph linear equations. Here we have a linear equation in general form, ax plus by equals c. We have a linear equation, which is in two variables. And any ordered pair, x, y, that satisfies this equation falls on the line. So if we were to graph it, the arbitrary line, any point x, y, the ordered pair, would be on that line. When we deal with inequalities, here we have ax plus by is less than c. Now, it could be greater than or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. We could insert any of those there. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to graph it as a line, but we have to be aware of two things. If it's less than or greater than, we're going to use a dashed line, because the ordered pairs that make up this line are not included as solutions. They're not equal to. So we use a dashed line to graph that. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we use a solid line just as we would an equal to, because it could include the ordered pairs that make up that line. The difference is when we deal with an inequality, it actually divides the graph into two areas, an area above the line and an area below the line, or to the left of the line and to the right of the line. And what we have to do is determine the area of that plane of that graph that would make the inequality a true statement. So let's go ahead and look at an example. Here we have y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 4. If we look at it, it kind of looks like an the equation of a line in slope-intercept form. And that's exactly what we're going to do to graph it. Now, I like to use the intercepts. So if x is 0, y would be 4. So I'm going to plot the ordered pair 0, 4, when x is 0, y is 4. Uh, I'm also going to plot the x in, uh, intercept. When y is 0, x would be a positive 4. Negative 4 plus 4 would be 0. So that would be this ordered pair right here, 4, 0. Now that I have two points, I can draw the line that is represented by this inequality. But I'm going to make an assessment and say, what kind of line? Is it going to be a solid line or a dashed line? Well, I see that the ordered pairs could equal the values on the line, because it's greater than or equal to. So I'm going to connect these lines using a solid line. So this is the line that makes up part of our inequality. Now what we have to do is to determine what side of the graph, the area above the line here or the area below the line here. And the best way to do that is to pick a test point. Any point on the graph I can use as a test point as long as it's not an ordered pair on the line, because we already know that the ordered pairs on the line will make it a true statement, because it's equal to. So I'm going to pick a test point. My favorite go-to test point is the origin, 0, 0. So I'm going to test this value. So when x is 0, y is 0. This is my test point. And I want to make sure it's a true statement or a false statement. So if I simplify this, I get 0 is greater than or equal to 4. That's not a true statement. 0 is not greater or equal to 4. So that means since this point is below the line, None of these points will make it a true statement. So I can assume that any value above the line. So I shade this entire plane of the graph. And I like to shade just using arrows. And we'll see in the next section 3.5, or 3.7, excuse me, why I do that. So <clears throat> anything over here is a solution to this equation, or this inequality, excuse me. Now, to be absolutely sure, I'm going to pick a value that's somewhere in this plane. And I'm going to choose this point right here. I know it's above the line. And this is the point 6, 0. Let's see if that makes it true, just to check my work. So y is 0 when x is 6. So negative x would give me that negative 6 value. So I simplify this. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2 is 0 greater than or equal to negative 2. Yes, that's a true statement. And this value lies to the above my line. And I know that's my shaded area. So it should be a true statement. So that's how we graph a linear inequality. Now, we're going to look at some more examples here. Here we have 
y is greater than negative 2. And hopefully, we recognize this. We review uh, how to graph lines. This, if this was an equal to sign, would be the uh, graph of a horizontal line. Well, if I graph it as a horizontal line, it would be y equals negative 2. But I assess it and say, well, is it going to be a solid line or a dashed line? Because this is an inequality. Well, it's just a less than symbol, so I'm going to do a dashed line. So at y equals negative 2, I would put a dashed line. So here's my line. And now again, I choose a test point. Because it's a horizontal line and there is no x value, I really don't have to worry about an x value. I have to just choose a y value because that's the only variable here. Uh, it doesn't matter what x is. So <clears throat> y is greater than negative 2. So I'm going to choose a point greater than negative 2 because I want a true statement. Maybe I choose 0. Is 0 greater than negative 2? And 0 in y lies right here. That would be a true statement. 0 is greater than negative 2. Since this value is above the line, and it made it true, I'm going to shade the area above the line. Any value of y greater than negative 2 on this graph will make it a true statement. Let's look at this one here. We have x is less than or equal to 5. Hopefully, we recognize this, that if this was just an equation, it would be a vertical line at x equals 5. So if I went over to x equals 5, I would have a vertical line here. Now, what kind of line? I assess by looking at the symbol, it can equal. So that's going to be a solid line. It includes the values on the line. Now I have to choose a value either to the left or to the right to see if it makes a true statement. Well, since it's x is less than, I know any value to the left on a number line would be less than a number. So if I choose a value, let's say 0, is 0 less than negative 5? Yes. So I'm going to shade any value to the left, one side of this line. Well, the side that makes it true is any value of x to the left of that. So I would shade this entire area. Any value I choose for x has to be to the left of that line. Now, what if we have an equation that looks like a standard line, not horizontal, not vertical, not those uh, unique lines like that? Here, we graph it as if it were just the equation of a line. So I like to use intercepts. So if x is 0, what times negative 2 would equal 12? Well, I know it would be a negative 6. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 below the x-axis. So that's the point 0, negative 6. If I look for the x-intercept, 3 times what is 12? Well, I know 3 times 4 is 12. So I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4. Now that I have two points, I'm ready to draw a line. I'm going to determine what kind of line, solid or dashed. Well, since it can be equal, I'm going to use a solid line. So I'm going to connect these with a solid line. And that would be the equation of the line. But since it's an inequality, I have to choose a test point. So I'm going to choose my go-to value because it's not on the line. I like to use 0, 0. So if I put 0 in for this and I subtract 0 times 2, that's going to give me 0. Is 0 less than or equal to 12? 0, 0 would give me the value 0. That's a true statement. 0 is less than or equal to 12. So since this is a true statement, I'm going to shade this side of that line, the area above the line. So we're above the line here. So this, anything in this area would make it true. Anything in this area would not be a true statement. Let's look at an application to where we might see a linear inequality. Here we have a word processor charges $22 an hour for x. Uh, which we're going to use as the variable x, for the first draft of a paper or document. And $15 per hour, which we'll call y, for a second draft of a document. If you need a document typed and have $100 to spend, maybe that's your budget, the inequality that models this situation is 2x plus 15y is less than or equal to 100. So we're given this equation. And we can do a little assessment. Yeah, well, it looks like a linear equation. If I'm going to graph it, I'm going to use a solid line because it could be equal to the $100 that I have to budget. So again, 
if we're going to graph this, because we want to find out how many hours can we afford for a first draft and a second draft of a document. So if we look at this, we're going to say, all right, let's find the intercepts. If I say, well, let's find the y-intercept, x would be 0. I would divide 100 by 15. If I divide 100 by 15, I'd get 6 and 2 thirds. You could work that out on paper. But you'd get 6 and 2 thirds, so that'd be right about here on my graph. If I find the x-intercept, 100 divided by 22 is actually going to be 4 and 6 elevenths. And I do like fractions better than decimals, personally. 4 and 6 elevenths, well, that's going to be 4 and a little bit more than a half. So I'm estimating, of course, because my tick marks are only integers of 1. And notice that we're only in the first quadrant, because we're not going to have a negative amount of hours. We're not going to have negative time. And that kind of makes sense. So if I graph this, now we have to choose an area. And notice I used a solid line, because I already determined that it was equal to. I have to choose a test point. Can I have so many hours of x to the right of this, or so many hours of x to the left, so many values of y below it or above it? Well, I can choose a test point. Well, I can't use 0, 0, because technically it's not on the graph. That would be dividing it up. So I'm going to choose the point 1, 1. So my go-to test point, let's say it isn't available. So we have 1, 1 here. If I try that, if I put in 1 here, I get 22. And if I put in 1 here, I get 15. We see 22 plus 15, which is 37, less than or equal to 100. That's a true statement. Since this value is below this line, I'm going to shade the area within the first quadrant. So I can afford any combination of hours for my first and second drafts as long as it falls between here. So I could say, well, if I only did a first draft, I could have it take up to 4 and 6 elevenths of an hour for just my first draft. Well, if I bring them a second draft and only a second draft, they could spend 6 and 2 thirds of an hour working on just my second draft. So we can see that this solution is an area of any combination. Maybe I could do uh, two hours of a second gra uh, draft and two hours on the first draft. That area is something that I could afford. It would be less than $100. So you can see this application gives me a range of what I can work with. So this has been section 2.5. Do the homework. Thank you for watching.